Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for watching. This show is all about giving you insights and showcasing brands that help you to live your best life and give you confidence. As always, I want to kickstart your morning with some motivational advice to help you to feel inspired and energized to start your day. Today, I want to talk about the importance of being confident in who you are and what you bring to the table. We are all familiar with people who have it all, the personality, looks, and integrity. However, everyone but themselves see their own value and worth. One of the keys to success is being confident in who you are and owning it. Only when we can do this can we be true to ourselves and present our true authentic self to the world. So how do we build our confidence? Well, you first begin with loving yourself. What do you like about yourself? What are some qualities you possess which set you apart from everyone else? Are you kind, hardworking, loyal, creative? When you begin to recognize these qualities, we begin to value and understand what we bring to the table in our relationships and careers. The world is filled with opinions of who we should be, what we should look like, and what we should do with our lives. When we begin to mute the voices of others and instead follow our hearts confidently, that is where the magic begins and true growth takes place. Remember, true confidence comes from owning who you are and being confident in your own skin. As the saying goes, no one is you and that is your power. Stay tuned. Coming up after the break, you were a contestant on Listen to Your Heart. Um, what made you want to find love in such an unconventional way? Um, I just want to find love in general. So okay. <laughs> um, when they asked me, you know, do you want to come on the show and do you have to be single because it's going to be a dating show, blah, blah, blah. I was like, um, yeah, count me in. <laughs> it wasn't really, the music part was kind of just like a plus for me. I was like, okay, cool. Like, that's going to be awesome too. But yeah. what yeah. really like intrigued me was like finding love. And I'm a sucker for a good romantic story. What does luxury mean to you? Luxury. In India, I discovered that true luxury isn't something you buy off a shelf. True luxury is a feeling that you are the Maharani of your world. And it can be all designed around you. All the beauty is yours. All the music is yours. India showed me that luxury doesn't follow designers and brands. True luxury follows its own heart. Incredible India. Natural sweetener, flavor all. 20 flavors to choose from. The perfect substitute for sugar and artificial sweeteners. Flavor all by Greenish. Flavor all from Greenish. Now available at Rexall Pharmacies. Next up on the show, we have Rudy Gutierrez, who is a contestant on The Bachelor Presents Listen to Your Heart. The show showcases 20 single men and women who embark on an incredible journey to find love through music. Rudy, thank you for being on the show today. How are you doing? I'm doing well, thank you for having me. So let's talk about your incredible journey and your passion for music. When did it all begin? Yeah, um, I grew up pretty much into it. My mom, I was her first, so when I was Born, my mom was like, I want her to do everything. I just want her to have a fair shot at figuring out what she wants to do. So she literally put me in, in everything. Every sport you can think of, um, you know, all the arts you can think of. I, I was, I acted, I, I sang, I danced, I played, like I said, everything. I swam when I was like six months old. So I kind of just did everything and, and I stuck to what I, I love most, which it was always performing and being on stage and acting and, and you know, the arts. And so... Um, I started acting actually when I was two and doing commercials and all that stuff and then the whole time I, I'm from San Antonio so um, wasn't really much on the music side of things I just always loved to sing and um, I never really did anything with it until I was about 12 though so um, yeah I just I, I always loved it my mom would put me in all the talent shows that there was in San Antonio and um, you know that's kind of how it all started and yeah, that's where it began. I've been doing it literally my whole entire life. <laughs> nice. 
those are always the best passions when it just comes to you naturally, you know. Um, let's talk about, you were a contestant on Listen to Your Heart. Um, what made you want to find love in such an unconventional way? Um, I just want to find love in general. So okay. <laughs> um, when they asked me, you know, do you want to come on the show and do you have to be single because it's going to be a dating show, blah, blah, blah. I was like, um, yeah, count me in. <laughs> it wasn't really, the music part was kind of just like a plus for me. I was like, okay, cool. Like, that's going to be awesome too. But yeah. what yeah. really like intrigued me was like finding love. And I'm a sucker for a good romantic story. So, um, you know, I was just like, oh, that would be cool. Um, I was single and was like, what the heck? So I did it. Yeah. yeah. And what was your experience like on the show? Were you nervous? Because I feel like something like that would be pretty nerve wracking because you're singing, you're also finding love at the same time. So what was your experience like? Yeah, it was <laughs> absolutely insane. Um, the good thing was that you, we didn't really worry about the music aspect of it until um, a few weeks into it after we were just dating the people mm -hmm. and getting to know everyone. Um, and, but it was having to sing with someone else, which I've, I'd never done before was very, very intimidating for me just because I, you know, it's enough singing in front of, on national television in front of, I mean, by yourself, right? So imagine having to put another person in there that you've never met, you just, mm -hmm. you know, met them a week ago or whatever, and, and you have to worry about their performance also, because he could mess me up, I could mess him up, yeah. you know? It could just, it could go really, really bad. So, um, yeah, it was very intimidating um, and very nerve wracking. But after the first time I, we had a performance, I was like, all right, he's locked in, I'm locked in. We were like meant to sing together. So that part for us wasn't hard. It was obviously the other part. <laughs> Yeah, no, definitely. Did you find love on the show? I didn't have a chance to watch this though, but did you find love on the show? And do you feel like singing together, um, especially because music is both your passions, do you find that kind of deepen the connection? Um, I didn't, um, but we are still really good friends. And um, at the time, I mean, I, I was definitely falling for him and, and I told him that. It just didn't wind up working out romantically. But yeah, the, the music, every time, I, what's weird is that now looking back, I, I love him so much to death as a friend, um, but I think it was just like circumstances that kind of like, like when you perform together, like you said, because that part, after we performed yeah. together, it was so magical, like mm -hmm. it was, it kind of confused me a little bit into thinking that I really was falling for him, and maybe I was, I still don't really know, I'm not sure, but now we're such good friends and we haven't sang together in a while, so it's like that part really helped that part of the connection that part of our connection and our relationship. And since we haven't had that, we've just turned into like the best of friends, but like he's actually coming back to LA soon and we're gonna sing together. So I'm like, hmm, let's see if those sparks <laughs> back again. I hope not, cause then that would just make things confusing. But um, no, it def cause it definitely, when you, when you have that chemistry with someone on stage, um, it's just, it's hard not to, to like them off stage. You know what I mean? Yeah, I was just gonna say maybe to rekindle the spark, you guys need to sing together. <laughs> but you guys are, you guys are gonna be singing together soon, so that's that's great. Yes. For those people that don't know, walk us through the whole process, what the show is, and how it works. Yeah, so basically, like I said, you you get there to the house, and there there's 20 single people, single musicians, right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, you don't know anyone, you just walk into a house filled with strangers, and uh, you kind of, we, we really didn't know what was going on. Like we were kind of waiting for Chris Harrison the first day to, to come and tell us what was going on. So we kind of just were there mingling with everyone. And then, um, you know, for the first, like I said, a week or two, it was just about finding your person. They, he, they didn't want to get into the music aspect of it because it was a show about love. Mm -hmm. So you wanted to, you know, love and music. So they wanted us to form connections without really knowing anything about the music side of that person, which was another scary thing. So I was like, I don't know if Matt sounds good. Like, oh my gosh, I like this guy in the house. He could be the worst singer, but whatever, we're gonna go with it. Um, and yeah, then then after that, after you're paired and some people are eliminated and people aren't chosen and whatnot, you then go on to the singing aspect of the show, which is doing competitions, competing against the other couples, and you're kind of locked into that couple now. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's pretty much it. And, and you just compete until the very end. And um, I, you said you didn't watch the show. Me and Matt, we made it to the finals, and then we wound up actually leaving before we could compete. Oh. Um, 
because uh, uh, he just felt like he couldn't he couldn't do it. He was like, I these other couples are like in love with each other, and he wasn't there, and it was like this big mess. And uh, I was very ready to compete and um, you know do it with him, and he was just like, I can't do it, so he left. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah. That's the premise of the show. That's what happened on my part. <laughs> <laughs> Would you ever go on another reality TV series? Actually, we had someone last week um, who is from another reality show. It's uh, Too Hot to Handle on Netflix. Um, his name was Harry. And I was just telling him, I feel like finding love on a reality show, uh, do you, are you aware of the cameras? Is it nerve wracking? Or like, are you able to really be present? Um, it's it definitely takes a certain type of person. I mean, yeah. it's not like you have to be, you have to be ready to just ignore all of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, it is a lot. I mean, it, and it, especially if you're not, like I said, I've grown up in front of a camera. I've grown up, you know, doing things. So the camera doesn't freak me out. But if you're just kind of like not in this industry at all and, and you're then thrown into a place with 20 cameras watching your every move, like it's a little weird. <laughs> Yeah, so, no, for yeah. sure. <laughs> it's funny because for me, like I'm in this industry, I'm on TV, and yet, um, I don't know, I feel like I would be a little bit conscious of the cameras, but you never know, I guess, until you're in that situation. So what did you learn from this whole experience about like who you are as a person and what you want from love? Yeah, good question. Um, I just learned that I, I need someone who's just... Well, first thing would be emotionally available because I tend to always go for men that are just not ready to to be (laughs) committed to anything. Um, So, but no, for me, just someone that that can, I'm I'm a very out there person. I'm loud, I can be obnoxious, I say what's on my mind. I need someone to be able to like hang with that and not be scared of me. I feel like as women, you know, people tend to be a little intimidated by women that are strong and Mm -hmm. and know what they want and say what's on their mind and, um, you know, that's been that's been an issue for me is I feel like I date guys that don't like that so I need to find someone that can hang with me there and and appreciates that and supports that and and loves that side of me um I think that's that's the biggest thing and um that, I, that I've I've learned recently and especially coming off the show um and it's just not scared to just to just try and and just go for it and and if we're gonna try then let's can go for it and let's do it mm-hmm. um so yeah that's that's what I learned. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I know this is part of the Bachelor Bachelorette um, whole series. Um, would you ever go on The Bachelor since you are looking for love? Yeah, I definitely would. I mean, I'm not. I'm definitely not opposed to to going on another show. I had a great time. As many people like, I know it seems like my experience towards the end was a little rough, but the whole the whole thing in a whole was just amazing and super fun and I made so many good friends so many amazing memories like I I wouldn't not ever say I would not do that again of course I would do it again in a heartbeat it was super fun yeah and what is the best relationship advice that someone ever gave you best relationship advice or that you can even give our audience because I'm sure there are a lot of people looking for love out there I think I think just be yourself and and make sure that you're my mom just told me this the other day because i've been dating or talking to people recently she's like you just want to find someone that you are just like just oh my god i love him so much you just want to feel that because if you don't feel that then it's not it like she and and her and my dad have been married and together since they were like literally kids so she like and and i still see the way that she looks at him and it's like it gives me hope like they are they love each other so much they've been through a lot but at the end of the day, they love each other so much. So she's just like, you just want, you want to feel that instantly. And, and unfortunately, I don't think I really, I, maybe once in my life have I felt that. So I'm still looking for that. I feel like you just need to find that spark and that, you know, just love for that person. And, and um, your happiness comes first. If that person really makes you happy, no matter what he has, no matter what he does, whatever, blah, 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 your happiness is the first thing that should matter. And um, yeah, so... That's about it. Yeah. Be happy. That's true. You know, just finding someone who makes you happy. Simple as that. <laughs> let's let's talk about your current projects. What are you up to right now? I okay. So like I said, I just got back to LA literally two days ago. Mm-hmm. Um, I am in sessions. I'm already writing. I was in studio till like two a.m. yesterday. So um, just getting more music out. Um, working. Just doing the the constant 
hustle of writing and, and trying to find the next single that I'm going to release. And I have so many, so many songs that I've written during quarantine. So just kind of getting that all, um, you know, together and, and then figuring out from there which one I want to, to release to people next. I did see you were a demo reel producer prior to going on the show. Do you think that helped you um, with your skills in terms of music and being on the show? I was a demo um, re demo singer. So oh, oh demo the, singer, interesting. Okay. So the the people that I worked for, they work for they're they, they're in animation and they do things for like Lionsgate and DreamWorks and and I they bring me in to sing to demo the songs for like Katy Perry or Selena Gomez, like like the big stars. So mm -hmm. that gave me um, a lot of practice in learning how to be a better singer. <laughs> but yeah, not mm -hmm. not uh, not the demo. Probably would have helped though. <laughs> <laughs> and what inspires your music? Do you write your own music? And you know what inspires that creativity? Um, anything really. Uh, I, I hear this question a lot, and I'm looking outside my window right now, and I see the beautiful like palm trees and, and hills and I think just I, I could write a song right now just looking at it and thinking about how beautiful it was I had a dream that I woke up to and and I want to write about that so literally anything uh, inspires me colors books movies people situations um, I, I'm never not inspired so uh, yeah everything <laughs> yeah that's great um, where can people connect with you on social media as well as uh, find your music online yeah, um, just my Instagram. It's just Rudy, which is actually right there. Thank you, guys. Um, <laughs> but yeah, let's go on my Instagram. I have all my links on there. I'm on that platform more than any other one. Um, so I usually just have all my links in my bio and that easy. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Rudy, for being on the show today. And congratulations on all your success. And we hope to see you soon. Yes. Thank you so much for having me. Take care. All right. Bye. Okay. Tag TV is available on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple and Android TVs, as well as on Apple and Android phones. Watch us live through YouTube and Facebook.